Welcome to Sea Sparkles Corner. This is Chapter 3 of my mother's World War II childhood stories, how it affected her and other things. And uh, Good morning. Uh, I understand that people enjoyed the episodes, what happened when I was during World War II. So uh, we'll continue with what I can think of. Um, one thing, uh, anything to do with aluminum or tin, we had to give up. So when we got our canned veggies from the store, we had to take a, an opener and cut both ends after we used the vegetables or anything in a can and rip off the outside paper and flatten them with our feet and put them in a pile at the top of the road for them to take to make uh, bullets and guns and all kinds of things for that they take the submarines down in uh, in Massachusetts where uh, the, my father was working on the ships for the war, etc. And uh, it's hard to remember everything, but um, I I don't know what else I was thinking of. Oh Food yes, boxes. uh huh. Food boxes. Oh yes. Well, England was at war. And uh, we have uh, aunt and uncle and cousins that live in England. And um, dad and mom would make up boxes of stuff that wouldn't spoil in the way of different food. And uh, they would even include a box of tea bags, which we had to sacrifice for, and ship them out to England to help them out there because of the war being so bad in England where they were being bombed all the time. And um, we we were lucky because we had vegetables and potatoes and and uh, all kinds of all the trees that were uh, we had um, pears and peaches and and apples and plums and blueberry bushes. So we ate all that stuff willingly and would help out giving them to other neighbors during the war where they couldn't get a lot of the stuff. But we never had a problem with fruit, food. We just had to use food stamps for anything we bought, including, of course, gas was rationed, like I told you. And um, I'm trying to think of other things that we had to do so much. Oh, I'll tell you something else you might find interesting. Us children, uh, the aluminum wrap, We'd wrap everything, anything we bought, like gum and, and, and wrappers that had the aluminum wrap, we had to save all that, and we made it into big balls. Everybody had to save it. And then we turned that into the government, you know, to help make the ships and stuff, that aluminum wrap. It was one of the things that we had to do, you know, so I think... Radio. And of course, we had nothing but a little dinky radio, and we would everyone would sit in the living room in the evening by the fire. We had a fireplace in the living room, and um, we would listen to um, the Green Hornet and the Superman series, and there was another one. Um, I can't think of the title of it, but the. The shadow? The shadow knows and all those things that were shown in the evening. They were series from Monday to Friday. And then we would also have the churches would be on the radio too that you could listen to. Because we lived out in the country where there was no church. All we had was a little dinky store in, in those days and a wooden school where it, it was three stories and you had to climb up and down. And we had toilets in the dirt basement that all had a hole in it in those days. And when we went to school, um, the, the uh, man that sold the uh, cows, that had cows, would bring around to the school and he'd bring regular little containers of glass containers, pint milk, and you could have the white milk or the chocolate milk, but you had to pay for it. And there was no such thing in those days uh, that were cafeterias. Everybody brought their own lunches in a bag, 
and the only thing they provided was the milk that was ordered, and you had your choice of buying it, and it was like three cents in those days for a little container. And once in a while, my mother would feel she had a few extra pennies, would let me get chocolate milk as a little treat. And in those days, even though it was even when it was cold of 50 degrees below or 40 degrees below, I had to walk back and forth for my lunch because I lived exactly two months from the school. And anybody that lived two months, two, two miles from the school had to go home during lunch. So we had an hour and 15 minutes off of lunch because we had to walk both ways and then come back. So school started at 6.45 in the morning and ended at 4 p.m. And my father, uh, in those days, took, had a, a horse and buggy and would take the children to their different homes after school um, because there was no such thing as a school bus. And I don't know if that was actually in World War II. I think it was. So, um, you know, I don't think of anything else at the moment I can tell you, except, you know, there was no such thing as television or anything. It wasn't even heard of, you know. And I lived out in the country where there was only one little store, and you would go in that store and get your mail, and that was that in those days. And so, um, and when we went to get our groceries, Mom and Dad and us children would ride in the car to Franklin to get our groceries, and Mom would go to three different stores to get what she could, because, you know, the food wasn't that plentiful, but we could get fairly good what we wanted, as long as we had enough green uh, stamps in those days. Everything you bought had to have a green stamp. So when you bought it, it had to, it had to last. And of course, I did mention about when we, we never went out in the car except to go to church and to get groceries, because Dad, Dad, in those days, had to use the car for work. And I think that was it. And my grandparents ha didn't have a refrigerator or an icebox. They had a tin thing in the window to keep their food in the winter, and in the summer they couldn't keep anything. Dad had, when, we, when I was young, we had an ice box where we put ice in it, and a guy came every other day to put the ice in it until my mother got a refrigerator. But Dad, when during, during near the end of the war, Dad bought one of those refrigerators that you, plant, you reach in and got when they first came out. And, I, and, of course, we slaughtered our own animals to have our food and bottom with them. Thank you for listening or watching. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. As always, the fun never ends in Sea Sparkles Corner. Feel free to share. Feel free to subscribe. End of part three.